guys what's up witches i'm here with another show and tell video for you a i wanted to sit and play with my makeup today which as you can see uh the eye makeup got a little bit over the top it's just a little bit extra today but that's okay because i wanted to sit down and film today anyway so that i could show off for you yet another one of the tarot slash oracle decks that I picked up here recently within the last few months. So not too long after declaring myself a witch and a Norse pagan last year, my husband was kind enough to pick up this deck, which is the Yggdrasil Norse Divination card. I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce this name. Normally I would give it my best shot, but that's a, that's a lot of consonants up in there. But what I wanted to do is just go over this with you briefly and give some of my initial thoughts, feelings, and impressions on it because to be honest, yeah, I got this a year ago and I really haven't used it very much. I only sat down and like, read through this entire guidebook the other week when I was thinking about sitting down to film a video about it. So let's get into it. So the deck comes in this big, huge, nice magnetic case with some beautiful artwork on it. I mean, that's kind of one thing that I will say that I both like and am a bit confused conflicted on at the same time with this deck is the artwork and I think that might be one of the reasons why it's just been a little bit difficult for me personally to connect with it is that you know I'm a very light bubbly colorful person for the most part I mean clock the channel name so this artwork while very detailed all the cards are um, just black and white line drawings, and so I find that just a little bit hard to connect with and get into. I don't want to say that it's boring, because this deck is by no means dull. It has a lot of cards in it, and it spans the length of you know, all of the you know, beings and entities within Norse myth from Asgard to Jotunheim and beyond. I believe that the guidebook actually does have the deck kind of uh, divided along the lines of the different realms. So you would find like the Odin card under Asgard and then it goes through Vanaheim, Helheim, Jotunheim. Um, and it even includes some, some things like this which are like elves and dwarves just named in, in the sagas and the eddas. So, so some of the beings you might be a little bit more familiar with. There's our man, there's Odin. And others I haven't really heard of. Oh, there's my other guy. Shout out to my boy Frere. And then, yeah, we just have Niffle for Niflheim and things like that. So other more obscure beings. And like look at the artwork on this card. Some like some of the artwork on, on these cards, I'm not gonna lie, is just a little bit like bizarre to me. And I think that's the other thing that I kind of find hard to connect with. You know, because I feel like we do all have our own little mental images of, of some of these gods, especially depending on how closely you might have worked with some of them. And so, yeah, I don't know. Something about the, the artwork on these cards is just a little bit hit and miss for me. Some of it I find very captivating and detailed and interesting, and others I'm just like, huh? <laughs> so, so that's just my opinion. Um, I think that, yeah, if you are working with Norse gods or Norse paganism and you're not so much into tarot, straight up tarot, 
maybe you would find this deck appealing because it is just an oracle card deck, meaning it doesn't follow the rider weight format of having a major arcana and then suits of cards like cups and wands, etc. It's just can self-contained kind of in and of itself. And then in this case, this one is pagan themed. I haven't, yeah, as I said, I haven't really used it very often. I have been going to it a little bit more frequently the last couple readings I've done. I, if you watched my last uh, Freya Friday intuitive tarot reading, I pulled a couple of cards from this deck just because, you know, yeah, being someone that does personally work with the Norse gods um, and has always just been into tarot and divination, I've definitely found that using oracle cards and tarot as a method of trying to reach out to deity and communicate with specific gods and goddesses and energies and try to get messages from particular beings that I might be working with, you know, like Freya or Odin. Um, sometimes, you know, you do want something a little bit more narrowed down and, and honed in on those energies. So whereas, you know, sometimes I might just sit down in front of Freya's altar with my regular tarot deck and try to commune with her and get and check in and get some answers. Other times, like with the last reading I did, it was kind of more of a general, let's see what other entities might be floating around, waiting into the sidelines, trying to communicate, but I haven't been picking up on the messages. It can just kind of be interesting to see what comes through in more of these specific cases. But yeah, on the other hand, there there are a lot of beings in this deck that I'm just not familiar with. And wow, the guidebook I do I did like because it does go pretty in depth with the different beings and gods and Jotun and different things that it has and explains. It, it got, does a pretty good job of, like, if you just wanted to flip through this book and see all the different gods and what they're tied to, what they might be in charge of or just most commonly associated with, it can be good for that. You know, because like here we have airs, healing and medicine, you know, things like that, the more familiar ones. And then we get into, then we get into people like the dwarves, like Brock and some elves in here as well, and Jotun, and there's a lot of beings that are very interesting to learn about and read about, but that since you might not necessarily be as familiar with, it can be hard to not only wrap your head around them, just in terms of who are they and what do they mean, but then also have to take that something like a god or a being or a Jotun. And if I'm just trying to do a, a reading, like a tarot reading, and ask some questions about you know mundane things like work, relationships, etc., um, it's like how do I take something like how do I take something like Thiazi and apply it to like my everyday life and things like that. So it's a little bit more work and, and just mental work having to run those translations of meanings and symbolisms in your mind in order to try to make something of these cards and get some kind of answer if you're looking uh, into divination is more of a specific question answer session type of thing but like what I've been doing lately in, in the tarot readings that I do on the channel is pulling from a, a standard tarot deck and then supplementing it with an oracle deck like this one and so I've found that's been a good way for me to ease myself into incorporating oracle decks alongside tarot because up until this point until you know basically I decided to be a practicing pagan and a witch I'd only ever really messed with tarot decks and not oracles. So it's been interesting to explore not only just the oracle decks in general, but also seeing how I can apply something like this one, which is very specific in its themes and its messages. So that, that also makes a little bit more effort and a little bit less intuitive to just jump in and start working with for me. But yeah, in terms of going into it with kind of a, either a mindset of, oh, I'm looking to communicate with specific 
Norse deities and see what messages come through. It can be very interesting for that. I want to say I haven't really used the spreads that the book gives you for examples, but it does, you know, kind of like you would see it as a standard like Celtic cross spread is a very common one. It does kind of have a tree of Yggdrasil spread that you can use with these cards. And another interesting thing I, that I'll, you'll see going through the, the guidebook for specific cards is it will go into very specific details as far as like Oh, if you pull Loki in the, and he's surrounded by other cards that are Jotun or his children, then it can amplify the Loki energy coming through. Or if you see Odin come up in a spread and near him is a, a Jotun, then maybe that means it's diminishing his influence and things like that. So I found it very interesting how it was relating the different cards to each other um, as far as that goes. My only qualm, I will say, is that while the guidebook is very in-depth and gives a lot of information, take it with a grain of salt, as with most things. You know, do your own research, because while most of the descriptions of, like, the gods and, and what they have, what they preside over and what they're associated with and different things like that, while most of the information seems to just be pulling from the Eddas and, and Snorri and sagas and things like that. There were just one or two things, just one or two kind of throwaway sentences or things mentioned every now and then that would kind of strike me as more of maybe the writer's own personal gnosis coming through to where I was like, oh, I've never heard of that term before. I'd never heard this connect. I've never heard this connection being made before um, and couldn't really find where they were pulling things from in some instances so just be on the lookout for that and yeah just keep in mind that especially as, as regards to divination and, and communing with energies and, and things like that that I think you know don't take what it's saying about the gods as historical fact here some of it seems to be pulling from what we actually know historically about the gods and some of it is, just seems to be kind of coming from their own unverified personal dealings and knowledge, which is fine. I'm all here for that. Um, kind of like I say, we all have our own mental images and, and pictures of the gods in our minds. So so yeah, take, take from these things what you will and feel free to leave the rest as always. In terms of just being a overall oracle deck, I, I, like I said, I don't really vibe or connect on a deep level to this. I think just from purely on an artwork level, it's just, yeah, some of it is kind of cool and, and intricate and detailed, and then other things I'm just like, what? Bird guy with a big beefy arm on there? Okay. <laughs> so, so that's just me, and it's very, and you know, tarot and tarot cards are a very personal thing. You might pick up several along the way that, you know, you'll just be given as a gift or pick up for yourself and order online and then when you get your hands on it, you're just like, I don't really vibe with this. I don't really connect with it. Maybe this one's not for me. And that's okay. I know there are a lot of other Norse themed card decks, oracle decks, and tarot decks floating around out there these days, especially with just the rise of Norse paganism in general on, you know, the pop culture radar. So, I mean, I have another one right back here that I'm going to go over, which I did. I do actually like a lot more, even though I don't like the artwork as much. I don't know. See, it's one of those weird things. Like, like this one I'll do another video about, but it's like very simple and straightforward, like simplistic artwork, but it's colorful and like just the meanings, I don't know, like I've just, I've pulled out of the two that I have, I've pulled this one and worked with this one a lot more often than I have this Idrisil deck, and that's really all I can say about that is just, yeah, I can't really explain or, you know, 
narrow down exactly why I'm not jiving with this deck as much as I thought I would or as I would like to considering I do like how wide the range is of beings that it includes. But yeah, it's just kind of a lot to take in, a lot to interpret in, in terms of just an everyday divination standpoint. You know, it might be good for like realm travel, communing with deity, maybe things like that. You know, maybe I'm just not applying it in the right circumstances or settings. Maybe I need to sit down and do this Yggdrasil spread that it lays out in the book and see um, what I get from that and how that plays into it. So, you know, it's definitely one that I'm planning to hang on to at least for the time being and play around with a little bit more, see if I start connecting with it a little bit more deeply. I mean, there are other decks that I've also had for years and years that I barely touch and others that are just kind of my favorites and my go-tos. So. Yeah, it's, it's very personal, and if you have this deck and you love it, then definitely, like, please take no offense to what I'm saying. Like I said, this is all just kind of my very initial first impressions based on the limited use that I've had with this deck so far, and it's definitely something that I would like to go through a little bit more um, before I decide, you know, if it's something I'm going to hang on to long term or not. But I just wanted to share it with you really quick. So being that, you know, this is primarily, I guess, a Norse or Northern Pagan themed channel on top of the random other stuff that I do on here. I do work with the Norse gods first and foremost. That's what brought me here. That's why I'm here. So I just really wanted to take a quick sec to share this with you in case you're also new to paganism or divination or both and you're thinking about maybe dabbling in cards and looking for a Norse theme related deck. Just figured I'd let you know what I think about this. I hope that you enjoyed this little show and tell review. Stay tuned. I'll definitely probably I will definitely be trying to have the other Norse themed deck that I have reviewed and put up here in the near future. And next, I think I'm planning on sitting down to film the Tacitus Germania part two um, slash deep dive into Nersus. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Until then, stay classy, pagans.